Mr. So. Mr. Letty. <laughs> Having read about what led into this body of work, I feel like maybe you should be on a couch and I should uh, <laughs> direct questions to you there. Because it seemed like you went through a period of really retrenching or rethinking or um, putting yourself on hold in a, in a serious way. And what led to that? Boy, starting right off with it. Um, well, Sean Kelly, wherever he is, uh, has, I have an ongoing debate with him that he says this came out of a crisis and that, you know, that I needed a therapist couch. Oh. And I feel like it came out of a, a epiphany and a sense of joy. And so thus, it was, uh, yes, look at, oh my God. <laughs> this says, I had written his down, note says crisis, crisis epiphany. Crisis slash epiphany. <laughs> because it did strike me that what you didn't go through a crisis, you went through a realization. A realization. And it was not a crisis, but I realized that it, it's a fine line between, you know, the, ther the therapist couch and the, you know, and the, whatever, the church. What do you do in a church? Well, I don't know. Yeah. It did sound like you, you also got into some kind of new agey things that I don't usually <laughs> associate you with. You don't strike me as a new agey kind of guy. Correct. Uh, <laughs> yep, yeah, so, uh, I mean, it, it was new agey. I mean, it was, I had a spiritual experience. It's, it, a, a peculiar thing about this is that if in the book, you know, I, there's a conversation with Hanya Yanagihara, right. and um, and she knew about this because she was one of the first people I photographed, or early on in the process, as were you. And when I photographed her, I I told her about this experience. So when we did this conversation, she she asked about it. Right. I was a little tentative to talk about it because uh -huh. it's not really what the work is about, but it came out of that experience. Uh -huh. um, uh, you know, so basically, you know, long story short, meditating, the light goes on, oh my God, everything's connected. <laughs> and, but, but here's where it got interesting. you've never been through some kind of drug experience like that? that I had, no, just backstage I was talking about my lack of drug experience and oh. how I would like to rectify that okay. this evening. There's still time. <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're, they're looking for something for me. Okay. But, uh, uh, no, uh, so no, I hadn't, I hadn't really experienced that. Uh, and I, I had this moment. And, and where it gets interesting in terms of photography is that, for me, photography was fundamentally about separation. So it was... It was, the world's out here, I'm over here, there's a piece of glass between us. Mm -hmm. And I always feel this separation, here's a way I can describe it. And that moment, uh, that epiphany was, wow, that's an illusion, everything is connected. I know it sounds cheesy, but, it, but I, I still believe it, though of course I don't experience that regularly. Constantly. Yeah. Uh. Um, but I did think, well, it's kind of strange to know that and then go back to producing pictures which are about separation. But I guess that, that's what surprised me in reading your discuss, discussing this, that you saw your work about, about separation, about alienation, about being s separate from your subjects, where I always felt that you know, it was about connecting to those people. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a moment. Ideally. It, ideally, it's a moment of connection, uh, but there's so much separation in it, of course. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's the separation yeah. that started kind of. I just wondered. Darkening the experience? Well, I just wondered should I be promoting separation, you know, in my work? I would like to promote, you know, connection. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so. Uh, and so I, you know, I thought, well, I would like to take a different approach. And I mean, before too much time goes by, can we talk about our experience? Do you want to talk about? 
I mean you photographing me? Mm -hmm. I have no memory of it. Really? <laughs> not entirely, but yes. I'd be happy to talk about it. Maybe you can enlighten me. Well, a it's not. I actually want to talk about the part that happened after I photographed you. Okay. Oh. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you don't remember? Not really. <laughs> really. <laughs> it, you were in bed. You don't remember? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is not a joke. Uh, it involved a microphone, like this. You don't remember? I, you're, you know, I have the worst memory in the world. No, no, I do. Um, okay. Oh, this is great. I mean, this is. <laughs> so. Oh yes. Yeah, exactly right. Oh. Remember? It's all coming back to me. Yes. Okay. So, and it's funny. Sorry, this is inside <laughs> Sorry, joke material. Sorry, really. But, where are we? Okay. So, here's what happened. Uh, most, almost. Everyone that I photographed as part of the series was a stranger. Vince was an exception. Uh, Hanya was a stranger. I'd never met Hanya before, okay. but I, I knew you. It We'd was, actually had an interview and we've talked, talked yeah, a it was of a, times before. Yeah. So. I, yeah, the whole package. I, when I started this, I, had no, I didn't know that I was going to just photograph strangers, and, and I was open to whatever. So I was coming to New York. I reached out to you. Uh, I also knew that you had a really interesting apartment, sort of famously... Famously full, interesting. Yeah, full of magazines and whatnot right. and, and images. So I wa also Lots just... Lots of whatnot. Yeah, and I just wanted to see it. Uh, so I asked you and you invited me in and I, and I took your picture and the picture's over there, whatever. Uh, but what, where it gets interesting is that I had this other thing that I was working on. I forgot about that. Yeah which was a podcast and the idea of the podcast was that it was myself and another person in the dark talking ASMR like if you know that sort of whispering very intimately almost like we're side by side except that when I did it with you I decided oh, it would be great if you were in bed and then I was just around the corner so we're not actually in the same room, but with headphones, it's like we're this close to each other, you right. know? Right. And... <laughs> I completely suppressed this. You know what? <laughs> A big part of the conversation was about your suppressed memories. Oh. Which we don't have to... <laughs> I think I need the couch. <laughs> we talked about that. <laughs> We talked about the fact that you'd never done therapy and, and you'd revealed really some amazing things. Uh. No, really. Uh, you actually made a, a psychological realization during that time. Oh. Yes. Obviously, it's completely erased immediately <laughs> right. afterward. No, but, but it, was, you. it was really beautiful. Uh. Uh, and then I later decided uh, not to... I, I just then I got more focused on the photography. Decided not to release this podcast. Uh -oh. That was episode number three, though. By the way. Oh. So they exist. Yeah, some, I remember. I wasn't. It was something you'd been working. I'd on. I'd been working no, on. No. Yeah, and it exists somewhere that recording. <coughs> but then <laughs> there was a storm. Do you remember that? There was a big storm outside. The windows were rattling. Uh -oh, uh -oh. And <coughs> no, and it became very stuff. dramatic. Yeah. <coughs> And you were in bed, whispering to me, there's rain pouring down outside. Uh -huh. And that experience, the intensity of that, which you've forgotten, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but for me was, was a, you know, it was really incredible, but there's no way I can communicate that experience. Yeah. A photograph is a totally different thing. It's a flat thing in which other people project onto it their own experience. Yeah, how do you pack that kind of... You can't pack it in. You can't... It's a different thing. Um, and, yeah, and it, I, with this work, I... Uh, this was Did you have similar sort of extended experiences with some of the other subjects? I did. I, I, uh, I was... Last week I was in Berlin, and, um, and this woman named Norika, who I'd photographed, who... The picture wasn't a successful picture necessarily, and so it's not part of the series generally, but um, she had a, a really great voice and a great spirit, and I, d I did an interview with her in that way. Mm. Um, 
and and she came up to me and she and it was really beautiful. She said like I I want to tell you that that exchange we had, you know, was really powerful for me. And and oh. I thought that's great. Like uh. the the photograph's not on the wall, but that's great. Uh. Uh, and it's almost better that it's not on the wall because it's uh, it mixes in with the experience. Then we forget the experience. We we see the we mm. remember the picture. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I want to go back yes. to what I mean post revelation, or uh, yeah, uh huh, that that you kind of pulled back and put your career on hold for it sounds like almost a year. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't didn't work. Didn't take photos. <laughs> <clears throat> More or less, and that's that's the way you sort of. I didn't. I didn't it. photograph people. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I didn't travel. So well, it sounds like you traveled, that, or at least maybe it wasn't the same thing. That you took advantage of all these invitations. This was later. Later, after. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, I, I had the revelation thing. I had this question about how to proceed as a photographer, and one of the thoughts that I had is I. I need to stop photographing people. Um, I need to stop using the camera in that way. Uh -huh. And so I stayed home, and I was working it, at this farmhouse. And, and for a year, I did that. And it wasn't like, I'm going to take a year off. It was actually, this is my new thing. Oh. I'm, work, I'm a different kind of artist. Uh -huh. and what, I, what did not you? to bring up Sean again, but I, uh -huh. uh, I I really, I had this, such a strong feeling about this, and I didn't want the galleries breathing down my back for new work. Uh, <laughs> so I came you, in and uh, I said, Sean, like, sit down, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and I said, I, I said, I'm happy, and I want you to know that I'm happy, and my work is gonna change. And. And Sean was like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. <laughs> and I said, no, no, everything's great. I'm, ha I'm happy. Uh, but my work, well, it's really going to be different. It's not going to be people in it. And, and he was very supportive. We've talked about this. I produced this stuff at this farmhouse, and he was totally willing to, to show it and uh -huh. go forward with it. Um, but in the end, I was making it just for myself. Oh. It was like meditation practice. Uh -huh. uh, and so it was useful it was useful for me uh, but i i don't think other people could access the work and do very you well. think you would ever show it in in retrospect in some way as a, i don't have a great desire to because i remember after seeing one or two pictures from this series at last year's apad yes, that you also had uh, maybe two or three yeah, yeah. still lives a couple pictures really snuck out terrific yeah. those uh, were from there yes so that because I thought, oh, maybe he's moving into still lifes. Now, you certainly have a number of still lifes as part of the show, and mm -hmm. I really I like the way they work. But I would miss people. And I right. assume you do, too. Well, that's, yeah. So then, I, yeah, so then you know, a year passes, and, and I do realize that, like, that people are, there's, there's such a force there's of you know such a force of energy in the work, mm. and I thought, is there a different way? Can I approach it somehow differently? And I did this experiment of spending time with people in a room without. Maybe I was take pictures, but we played together and. Yeah, that sounded kind of odd. Yes, <laughs> it was. Uh, it was a, it was a true experiment, um, and. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to see what it was like to, to have that moment, not, you know, to, to just play with a person, not unlike the, this recording, uh -oh. uh, just to try to find different ways of being with a person uh -oh. and see what happens. <coughs> and it was through opening up myself to that that I came back to photography and I accepted that, okay, there's some distance in it, but I feel a little more connected than I had in the past. And I also did feel, after having been, a, you know, stopped working this way for a period of time, I felt refreshed. Um, I should also say that, 
you know, I do magazine photography and I stopped that. Oh. And, and for that period. And that helped too. I came back to what it feels like when you first start taking pictures. And, and you feel that the work as a result it has changed for you? That, that your approach to the work has changed? Yeah, not, it's not like I'm a whole new photographer at all. Okay. It's very yeah. reminiscent. I think it, the work really kind of looks like Sleeping by the Mississippi. It's sort of... Uh, there's, there's definitely a consistency. Yeah, so I, it, I felt, oh, I can do this again. Like, I can just enjoy this. Uh, and, and it was good. Was uh, there something in between that, that made you feel you were going off course? I, no, this is the this is the thing where it wasn't a crisis. I didn't feel off course. Oh, I just good. felt, but I felt, <coughs> having been through all this, I felt corrected. Um, oh. But, but I'll be honest. Like now, I've been having all these shows, talking about it, and now I feel a little off course again. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do, because uh, it changes. Because I I had that experience with you, and, and had all these amazing experiences, but now it's a thing on the wall uh -huh. functioning in a different way, and I'm talking me, me, me. Inevitably. Yeah, but it changes it. Uh -huh. uh, and there's, yeah. yeah. Well, <clears throat> having gone sort of through this, is there, are you looking at a kind of next thing? Uh, or is, has this, has this process changed what you're, what you are likely to move on to? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, back in, as I was just finishing up the book and starting on the printing of the show back in December, I was so, I was really excited about the next project and had it all, kind of mapped it. My favorite time making work, is is just before you start, you know, because it's like, it's a masterpiece uh -huh. in your imagination. And I, <laughs> so I was, in December, I, I was in that moment. Um, but now there have been so many changes uh, based on this experience that I, I have to reevaluate once again oh. how to go about it. Uh, so is this now time for a kind of pulling back you know, a little bit? And at least, you know. Certainly could not be a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, I, my, I'm really excited because this is the last event. I mean, I'm happy to be here. This is the last uh. event. Uh, <laughs> and then the next two weeks I have jury duty. And I'm... Oh, no. No, but I'm like, this You're is so great. You're looking forward to it? Yeah. <laughs> I can't go anywhere. Uh. And it's not talking about me. Uh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Although they, they could immediately eliminate you. I know. Yeah. I expect it. But, yeah. you know. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sounding mopey. I don't mean to... I don't. Oh, I don't think so. Okay. Not okay. to me. All right. Thank you. But, you know, who am I to say? Um, <laughs> uh, one of the things you, in the conversation you have with Hanya in, in the book, you say, I'm struggling to talk about my work this time around. Um, and my question immediately was, well, do you really need to? Uh, that seems to be part of your process, though that you enjoy talking about the work and kind of going through it on some level. Um, I mean, I think there are other artists who say, you know, the work speaks for me, I don't need to say anything. Sometimes I wish they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm always interested to know what, you know, what's on people's minds and why they're doing what they're doing. Right. No, I've thought about, I, that's one of the things that I'm evaluating right now is that, um, it's funny because I, in the back of the book is this interview that we're referring to, and and I started off saying I don't know how to talk about it, which I didn't, for all those reasons, mm -hmm. um, and then she teased out of me the meditation thing, and then that's what gets latched onto, understandably, yeah, uh, and that becomes the narrative, uh -huh. and and that's fine, that's fine, but it is hard to just, you know to just sit in front of this picture and talk about composition or color and how it makes you feel or, you know, so it's, oh. uh, but I have, I do like, I, I do appreciate 
being able to talk about work too. And it's in the past, it's just been easier because there's been a more of a structure to hang things on. Oh, because there's more of a like the let the broken manual, the kinds of like overarching yeah. ideas. Yeah, overarching ideas. Because I, yeah. I was looking back at those some of those pictures and thinking how. I mean, one of the things that moved me about that book was here are all these outsiders, people who probably did not want to be photographed or did not want to be even talking to you half the time. Uh, and yet there was something, I felt a real connection to those people, at least a, a giving in on their part to some degree. And, and not that you were conquering them in some way, but that you were connecting with them. Um, so. I don't feel like you know the previous work was some, you know, again, a, you know, alienation. At least it certainly didn't read that way to me. Um, so it, it interests me that you felt what you were doing was, you know, not connecting, uh, especially when you were connecting with people who probably didn't want to at all. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, yeah. <coughs> Thank you, and I think, I mean, I do think that photography is very good at this thing of connecting through disconnection, <laughs> you know? So, uh, so, you know, to photographing, this is why I like photographing people through glass, too, and it's like, <coughs> you know, you're, you're having this moment of connection, um, but it's, it's, you're moving forward and it's slight and so it can be that can be a blurry you know Robert Frank photograph or it can be um, a more formal photograph but it's it's moments of connection and disconnection which I, you know I, I accept that that that's my that's my arena to work in for the most part yeah, yeah. well yeah there's a lot of work in this show that's kind of you know reflections mirrors mm -hmm. uh, Distortion on some level, but you know, uh, not always a direct connection. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I love Zarkowski's idea of mirrors and windows, and this. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you know, curator of photography at the Museum of Modern Art in the past had this book, Mirrors and Windows, and he kind of divided photographers into these two types. And he said there's a spectrum between them. And so there's window photographers that are really out looking at the world, and there are mirror photographers looking inward. And, and I've often thought about that, and I, and I realize that I'm much more of a, I'm a mirror photographer that's out in the world. Uh, but I also, it's like window, when you photograph a window, depending on when you photograph it, you get a reflection, it becomes a mirror. Yeah, oh. And so that's, you know, I'm like using a window as a mirror. <laughs> How's that for psychological? Having it both ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things that I, the details that came up in the Hanya interview was you talking about delivering Chinese food as a kid and, and having this sort of thrill, not thrill is probably too big a word, but the, the excitement of, the person opening the door and your view into this world. Absolutely, this, yeah. You know, probably a very brief view over their shoulders into their, you know, foyer or whatever. But I love that idea of that being an ex a moment of excitement for you and something that I, I think that you do quite a bit in this body of work. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, I, I. <clears throat> I am a voyeur, but so many of us are, you know, walking around like this city, you get to do it a lot, uh, peek in people's windows. And yeah, and that's, that is that moment of connection. Mm -hmm. A little bit, and uh, disconnection, yeah. see, there we are Yeah, because you're in, in that, I mean, in that moment as delivery boy, you're seeing just the briefest thing, and it probably has not turned into a sort of porn scenario, but- uh, Only once. Oh, okay. Well, we could talk about that later, maybe. <laughs> it really did. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's funny that you mentioned this because I once, you know, he answered that he was a regular customer, answered the door, and he was obese and he was totally naked. Oh. And I, you know, it, it was so strange. I didn't want to do it. And he invited me inside, which I did not 
do. Uh huh. And, and and then we no longer deliver to him. So it ends that. there. Yeah, it ends there. It wasn't a porn set, but I did have that experience. Um, I wanted to ask. This is a strange conversation. <laughs> I wanted to ask a quick question about one of the, the pictures yes. in, in the show, the little red Corvette. Ah, yeah. Is that at Prince's whatever? <laughs> or is that something completely different? Uh, no, it's, it's, Since it is in Minneapolis. It is in Minneapolis. So uh, I live in Minneapolis. And um, it's, yeah, it's worth noting that after that year, I also decided I'm going to start doing jobs again, doing magazine jobs, but as a editorial way, stuff. editorial uh -huh. things, as a way to get access sometimes oh. to places. And uh, Vogue magazine was interested in doing something after Prince died and possibly, possibly at Paisley Park. Um, I have this, this story, which is true, which is that Prince was the neighboring property where I grew up. Oh. and. Uh, this is past the suburbs, and he eventually bought my childhood home and tore it down. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did and you resent him? I did not at all, because okay. he actually preserved all of that land, this huge piece of property and all these woods from suburban development, uh -huh. and it's really sad right now because it's all about to be developed, because oh. um, he didn't leave a will. But at any rate, I was interested in the different places Prince had lived. Oh. Uh, and so a writer and I, Rebecca Bengal, she, maybe she's here somewhere, I don't know, but she and I went to all, visited all these different places and we also visited this woman's home. It's a long story, but it was a Prince story for Vogue. Oh, so that was, it wasn't his house, it but was it was not his house. Else's. Okay. Not um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, but one of the things that you, mentioned in an interview uh, that struck me was talking about a wall photographer and a book photographer. I mean, I think of you as both, but I think of you primarily as a book photographer, that you think in terms of books, and that interests me and mm -hmm. you know, a lot. Uh, because you're constantly producing either large books or small books or some different kinds of publications. Right. And, and it does seem that you think about uh, the book or the page in a lot of ways. It, it, absolutely. I always have. And with this series, I thought, you know what? I'm not going to start with the book. I'm going to start, I'm just, I'm not going to think necessarily the wall, but I'm going to think individual photograph. Oh. That was the plan. Uh -huh. uh, rather than a series, rather than a. That, rather than a series. Uh -huh. And the idea with Mike, Michael Mack is over there, my publisher. And I said to him, that, like, this is just going to be more like an exhibition catalog. And it's going to be really, I want it large, but I want it quite limited in addition and expensive. I don't want it to be like a, a book book where it has a big concept attached uh. to it. But then about halfway through the shooting, the old impulses kicked in. <laughs> and it started turning more into a book. A book, OK. Um, but it, you but know. How did how would you describe those old impulses? Like, how, how does it change what you're actually doing? Um, or does it just, is it just the way it, things it, fall together? It changes because, so I made like this picture of books I made early on and, and I didn't, I just made it because I, I was at this woman's house. Uh, the, photo, the portrait of her didn't quite work. I saw this, oh my God, this is so beautiful. It has nothing to do with anything. It wasn't, it was just a picture I wanted to make. I made the picture almost like wall photographer mode, not yeah. thinking. And then later, I kept seeing books everywhere, and somehow it became this kind of through line. Mm. And, and I, I started, you know, seeing the world in relation to the other pictures that I had made. Oh. So there, there ends up being a kind of... There's more of a through line. There always is, I yeah, would imagine. Exactly. So, and, and it's a funny thing with the books because they weren't... I still don't understand it. Uh, why, is a, you know, why is a picture of a book interesting? I mean, one of the things that occurred to me is that in that kind of glimpse into someone's house, mm -hmm. you can get invited to 
somebody's house, you look in their bookshelf and you, like, you try to figure out the person right. based yeah, on I the books. Right, I was doing that with that, that huge, crazy yeah. mess of books. So there is something about that. <laughs> and, and then it was only much later that I realized that a picture of a book is kind of like a picture of a person. There's all that stuff inside yeah. that you can't read, but you, oh. <laughs> you, know, you, you see the cover of the book, you imagine it, what's inside. Uh, so it, I was curious whether you thought of the still lifes in this, in this group and the show as portraits in a way, uh, or as substitutes for, for the people that are not in the pictures. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, I, the, yeah, the kind of pure interiors f function a little bit like a, like a portrait. Um, and I've always, like I tried to set up my practice in the beginning so that I could be free to photograph portraits and landscapes and interiors and, and what have you. So it was important um, that I felt that same freedom here. My, the, only, the big constraint is that I wanted to be inside. And, in, but I, but in I didn't the want, interior. In the interior, uh -huh. but I didn't want the repetition of portraits. I didn't want just head, head, head. So I wanted space. So it was important to have these and then also their, their views out the window occasionally. Oh, oh. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, well, the show that you put together at APAT, mm -hmm. uh, which is called... A Room for Solace. A Room for, yes. Uh, and the idea that uh, one of the wall texts says, Be behind these doors I find a sliver of solace in these unstable times. Um, and it, it's a really eccentric range of pictures. Um, Sally Mann, uh, James Van Der Zee, um, Chris Vereen, uh, Marie Cassindis, uh, Bruce Davidson, Wright Morris, uh, Arbus, Maplethorpe. Mm -hmm. and, um, but Walker Evans seems to be a kind of presiding influence there. And I wonder if you would talk a little bit about your connection to Evans. Yeah. yeah um, well, in. So if you're an American photographer, and particularly in a pre-internet age, you, pro you probably have Walker Evans in your DNA. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. along with Robert Frank, it's just sort of in there. Um, and I, I always loved Walker Evans stylistically, uh, and almost as a window photographer, and I, and then it only later loved Robert Frank as a kind of mirror photographer. Uh -huh. um, but I loved Walker Evans stylistically. And then uh, there's this book, Message from the Interior, that he did later in his life. And it's only 12 photographs. And it's a big gray book. And I love that as a book and as an object. And, and the book itself has pictures from different stages in his career. And so you have... And they're you know, just all interiors. They're all interiors, but sometimes there's a person in the interior. Uh -huh. And sometimes it's a Depression-era picture, but sometimes it's a wealthy person's house. And, and then there's this title, Message from the Interior. What's the message? Mm. Uh, and it's a mysterious book. And, and that was a big part of the inspiration for this uh -huh. work. Yeah, Because uh, you... There's also something at APAT, I mean, I'm sorry, at Aperture right now, uh, relating to your, this project you did relating to Robert Adams and Summer Nights. Uh, so I'm also curious about that influence on the work. Robert Adam, Adams is always, he's, an, he's a perpetual influence for me. Um, I often talk about him as the good angel. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the bad angel? Like Ouija's like the bad angel. Oh. Like <laughs> Ouija's saying like, make it more intense. <laughs> you know, like, uh, but also, but Ouija's full of joy. Uh -huh. uh, and there's something solemn about Robert uh, Adams. Yes. Um, but, uh, but Robert Adams is saying like, don't exploit people, don't use them. 
you know, and we just like have fun. And fuck it. Yeah, right. fuck it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're, and I'm, I, yeah. And they're both, they're both there for me. Uh, well, also you mentioned in talking with Hanya, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> Peter Hujar, mm -hmm. who I hadn't heard you talk about, and who I'm, of course, very close to and fond of, and, and um, I wondered when you were, when you became interested in that work, and wh in what particular way. <sighs> Hujar's been uh, in the mix for me as an influence from, I mean, 15 years, I, from when I started, really early on. Really? Oh. Yeah, yeah, and I, and a long time ago, I mean, it was 10 plus years ago, I was asked, who's your favorite photographer? And I said, Peter Hujar. And it was a strange thing to say, because I didn't really think through it. And I thought, well, that must sound odd because he was not a project photographer. Um, right. Doesn't really have a big narrative structure that he's working with. and did very few books. Very few books, and I don't think of him in, that ter in those terms anyway. No. Um, and, but the, just the quality of, ex this, of exchange with the subjects, just the, the, the realness and tenderness of them, so beautiful. Um, but also, you know, completely different in terms of photographing people he knows and loves and so forth, and it's, so it's, I'm a wildly different type of photographer, uh, but I, I just love the work deeply. Uh, well, yeah, I remember talking about that. You said something that you found it difficult to photograph people who were close to you. Um, have you never done that, or is it, why do you think that is? You know, back on the couch. This is, definitely, <laughs> this is definitely psychological subject matter right here. But uh, no, because I love... Uh, I love f photographs of people's families. Uh, yesterday, I was introduced to Peter Galassi, who did this, ter this, this book and exhibition, Pleasures and Terrors of Domestic Trusty, Comfort. Right, right. Yeah. And that book came out when I was in college. It was a huge influence. And, and I loved you know, Doug Dubois' work, these um, people photographing in their homes, Larry Sultan, et cetera. And, and early on, I tried doing that sort of thing, and it just was really inauthentic. It just wasn't natural oh. to who I am, uh -huh. um, for whatever reason. And so, inauthentic, and then and not successful. Yeah, not. N yeah, it just doesn't work. It's like, uh, it's kind of like when I've, uh, you know, you're the expert on fashion photography, and I. I go, you know, I do little fashion things, but if it ever turns into real fashion photography, it's totally false for me. I can't uh -huh. do it because I don't know anything about the clothes and it's just not how my brain sees. Yeah, um, it's probably better to stand outside it. Exactly, yeah. And so <coughs> I, I, when asked to give advice for young photographers, I always say, you know, try doing everything and then listen to that, what feels right. And it, if if it feels right making pictures of dogs, then do that. If, uh -huh. if, 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 if it feels right to photograph nudes, do that. Um, and for whatever reason, it works better for me when I'm out in the world with strangers in an intimate way. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're glad of that. We're happy that you do that. <laughs> yeah. So should we break for... it's. 45 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, take questions from the audience. Way in the back. Oh, God, way in the back. Yeah, can you speak up? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I did, I mean, I did this podcast. I do little video experiments. The, um, the project Vince mentioned about at, with Aperture it was a video project. I'm, 
Yeah, I'm constantly experimenting and yeah. Uh, but I, I keep falling back to this, this way of viewing the world. I, I had this really kind of amazing experience at Marfa recently. Uh, uh -huh. And because I, like if I could be reborn as an artist, I would be a, reborn as a light artist. Yeah, I would. Like Meaning a, what? Like a California light artist, like a, oh. yeah. Like, like sitting over there, and no, it was. I, I think it's just as well that you're doing what you're doing. Right, but I so I had this experience um, <coughs> where uh, it was. Um, oh shit! Now, I'm, uh, oh god, see my memories too. Uh, uh, forgetting the name of what one sees, seeing is forgetting the name of what one sees. What uh, Robert Irwin? So oh. the Robert Irwin installation there, <laughs> and. It's, it's really magical, and I'm watching this light move. And then way down at the end, this guard walks in. Uh, and I'm like, wow, this is incredible, this distance between myself and this guard. And it's like, you know what? That's, that's my subject. I'm not the light artist. Uh, I'm photographing the space between myself and other people. Uh -huh. Back to that. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, that was a long-winded answer. Yeah. With, with Wallace Stevens and, yeah, and oh, and the Gray Room, yeah. <coughs> the title of the, the book. Yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, uh -huh. so I've been, you know, I, I always say that I like, I, I used to say I didn't like poetry, but I read it because it functioned like photography. But then over time, I st started really like po liking poetry. Um, but I find the way, you know, for example, the repeating books, that's, sort of the way something functions in poetry. These, you, you, you kind of go with, with the images, there's a movement through space. And, and so I read poetry and Wall Stevens is, is such a great poet of the experience of consciousness. And so he is both window and mirror as a poet um, and can talk about that relationship. And so, Early on in the making of this work, I read that poem, The Gray Room, and it seemed to be exactly what I was doing, which is being in a room with another person, looking at them in the room, and, all, and the room is not, in fact, gray. It's full of all these delightful colors if you spend enough time looking. Um, but you don't actually crawl under the skin of the other person. You just have an awareness that they're there. And, and I just thought that was a great summation. And I also like that this title, The Gray Room, which is sort of like the, the Walker Evans book, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> anyway. But it is, it's a terrific title because it's about them and about you at the same time. Exactly. It's about the, the, the exchange of you know, sensitivity. Exactly, and that's, what, that's what's so great about Wallace Stevens is this, it's always, it's this world out there and the world in here going back and forth. Oh. Questions? Book signing time? Oh, one last one. It is a green book on top. It was totally just there. That is it. You have no, well, you can kind of tell because this is like a French door. So it's a really high doorway. And that's really, really high. Yeah, it's very amazing. <laughs> that's the magic. Yeah. Uh oh, now hands are going up okay. everywhere. We're going to have, yeah. I, I think I missed the middle section. Sorry. Uh, the idea of mirroring, yeah. a psychological mirroring, but I'm not sure what that means. Uh, even at a psychobiological level, we change our heart rates based on our interaction. Oh, absolutely. Oh. No, absolutely. I mean, I think, so I've thought a lot about, because I, lately I've been doing a lot of interviews, and you do an interview on a phone, versus doing an interview sitting this distance, mm -hmm. it's like, it couldn't be more different. Um, and Is like, one easier than the other, or no? 
Well, I really appreciate the in-person, you know, for that, because you can read the body language, but I don't know if it works better for the journalists. Uh, I'm not sure. It does. To be in person? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's... Uh, yeah, phys being in physical space really matters. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. Here and then back here. Yeah. This question about being in Magnum and and how that affects my work. Oh, it it hugely has affected me at different phases. Um, for those that don't know, Magnum is a cooperative of photographers around the world. Um, they're, they're primarily understood as, uh, as functioning as an agent or as an agency. Um, and so that means different things at different times. Uh, but in this particular period of time that we were discussing, I wanted to turn that off and stop working in that way. And what's amazing about Magnum is that I, it's owned by the photographer, so I can just say I'm done working. <laughs> So that's okay, and and it, then it functions like more like a support network, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's back on again, and I'm and I'm working, yeah. How do you direct your subjects? I mean, mm -hmm. how much are they found, and how much are they constructed? Uh, I was thinking of that too. You experienced that, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, with my picture, <coughs> he kept telling me. Okay, you're not in focus, you're not in focus, don't worry about it. Uh, which actually completely, you know, made me comfortable. I thought, okay, I don't care what happens, as long as I'm not in focus, I'm fine. Uh, so, but I, that's, I don't remember too many other directions, except you did sort of push me around a little bit. Yeah, well, and your experience actually was quite unusual, because I, so in, in talking about the space between myself and another person, most of the pictures here, like if I would reach out, I can't touch the person. They're, you know, about six or seven feet away from uh -huh. me. Um, in your case, I was much closer. There isn't uh, much space in my apartment to get very far away. No, no, oh, trust me, a lot of these apartments were really tiny, oh, but, okay. um, but in your case, I was much closer. Is it because I knew you already? I don't know, uh, but I, and I was also experimenting, I was, and I was really interested in trying to communicate the feeling of space. And so these oh. out of focus elements are important in a lot of the pictures. Uh, and so I was working this different way. And with this particular camera, large format camera, um, things changed dramatically with little increments of movement. So in your case, I just needed you to stay right where you were, to stay still. Uh. But generally speaking, um, there is, you know, I, I sometimes say it's like when you make a family picture and you say, like, move over here, oh, take off your hat, I can't see. Uh -huh. um, with this series, though, I, did, I would say, is there a place you would like to be photographed sometimes? You know, it was somewhat collaborative, but I'm in charge. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because there were, are a few kind of peculiar circumstances. Like, I'm thinking of that guy who's sort of in a fetal position in bed holding some kind yeah, of... Yeah, it's really different. That's very peculiar. It's <coughs> a very peculiar picture. Um, I mean, did he just do that for you, or...? No, so, yeah, so... That... So... Maybe I we'll... I don't, know, no, I don't remember whether that's in the it's show It's not in the not. show. It's not in any of the shows. Uh, <laughs> and it's in the book. Maybe we'll end with this, because it's, okay. it's kind of an interesting story. So you're just <laughs> going to have to imagine this, this man in a fetal position on his bed, holding a flower. Um, He's dressed. He is dressed. Uh, in yeah. shorts, though, if I remember. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the story of that picture is that, uh, yeah, it's not in any of the shows, and it was almost not in the book, and there was a big question, should it be in the book, should it not be in the book? It's very evocative of earlier work of mine, more like Niagara. Oh, um, it's right. very charged um, work, and, and I ended up keeping it um, I wanted this kind of spike of energy in the middle of the book in the end, mm -hmm. I decided. Um, but the experience, the story of photographing him, this is in uh, Bucharest and Romania, and um, 
tiny apartment, really small. And I walk in, and there's only like two options. There's the bed, and then there's this drum set. Oh. And, and he told me that he was uh, studying law, but he, he's also a drummer, and he wants to be a professional drummer, but he doesn't think he can make it, and he's studying law, and he's really conflicted about this. So I thought I would photograph him on the drum set, but the light just was terrible. Uh. Um, and so he went on the bed, and he, and he was in the dress shirt, and, and then I, and I was focusing and doing things, and he said, you, are you getting that flower on, on the side of the bed? Uh. And I, I said, I, I'm definitely like, aware of that flower, but it's, it's right on the edge of the frame. And he said, my girlfriend broke up with me, and that's the only thing I have from her. Oh. I was like, wow, that's, really, that's beautiful. And I said, would you want to hold the flower? And he said, that would be great. Oh. Um, and I went over and picked up the flower, because I didn't want him to move, picked up the flower. Oh. So he said, careful, careful. So like, be careful with that, because it's a, It did look pretty fragile. It's frail, oh. yeah. Um, so like he was so sensitive about it, and you could just feel the ache from him. Oh. Uh, and, and I made this picture, but what is really different than in the past is, because I felt like I'd pushed it, had I pushed him too far, and so I asked multiple times, are you sure you're okay with this? This might end up in an exhibition somewhere. Uh, right. And he's like, I understand, you're an artist, you're making art. Uh -huh. And, and so we did cooperate in the picture, but it, it, it's staged in a sense, but it's not like I brought in flowers. Right. Yeah. All right, <laughs> well. should we? Sorry, I know there are more questions. <laughs> Thank you.